Hello and welcome to tutorial 162 and uh, in this tutorial we're going to be creating a show me study that uses the option chain provider and the quotes provider objects. When applied to the chart it uses a method that calls the option chain provider to find the options for the stock symbol applied to the chart. It then uses the quotes provider to create a quote object for each of the option symbols in the option chain. And for each quote, an update event is set up. In fact, two update events, one for an update of a call option and one for an update of a put option. And each time the update is fired, the program retrieves the strike price for the option and the trade volume. It then updates a dictionary with the highest trade volume for, a, for each uh, strike price for the specific bar that's been calculated. The program constantly sorts a vector of the trade volumes and determines the strike prices with the highest volume for, each, for the specific bar. The top three values are plotted for calls and the top three values are plotted for puts. The show me study needs real time bars to function and it only works, at least this program only works with stocks, although you could modify it. So let's review the program. So to do that, we're gonna go down to nearly the bottom of the program where we'll find the one statement. Now, um, part of the uh, the thing we need to find out is what is the chart? Is it an act using exchange time or local time? We do that using this syntax here, which you could reuse something very similar, and that sets the value of a variable time z to either one or zero. We also create four dictionaries, two vectors, and then we call two methods. Now, the first method we call is OCP load. Now, these are both methods that I've written. And what this does is uh, we input the symbol. This is gonna create the options chain provider. So let's go back up to the top or near the top of the program and you'll find the option chain provider load. You'll see that we're using this input OCP symbol, which is the symbol for the chart. Uh, in this particular case, I've hard coded the expirations and strikes and also the underlying type to stock. I've set regionals and standard false, weekly true, quarterly true, real time true. Here we use that time Z that I just mentioned to set the time zone. We also create uh, an event, state changed, although not uh, strictly necessary for this to work. We load the option chain provider and uh, we just uh, print a little bit of information. What the event does, it just tells us when the state changes. We just use that to print out some information. And if you were to go back to a chart, you'll see here, you can see that the, uh, the things, what happens when the program is first applied, we get loading and then loaded. So uh, having done that, we then go back down to the one statement and we process the OCP. So we've created an option chain provider and we've called it OCP. And we then process that option chain provider. Sorry for going up and down here. Process the OCP using OCP as an input. What this is gonna do is create quotes providers for each of the options in the option chain. So let's go back again to nearly the top of the program. And just after the event we just looked at, we've got the process OCP. And what this does is it just goes through the OCP using options count. And for each of those, it creates the quotes provider. Now, um, what, we, what we, to do that, we're using the create QP, which is another method that I've written here. But what we're doing as we create it is we are storing this into uh, a dictionary, or in fact, two dictionaries, dict, dict QPs underscore call one dictionary and dict QPs underscore put the other. So it goes through for all of the items in the option chain provider, creates those quotes quotes providers and puts the values into a dictionary. And as I say, to create them, we are using this method. And this method is right here. It has two inputs, a, uh, a symbol and 
a string, whether it's put or call. And uh, I should just mention in the previous method, we are setting up a option security for each one of the options. And we are storing the information based on whether the option type is call or put. So when we call the diction, the, uh, the method, we put in a string for call if it's call, and we put in a string for put if it's put. So just going back to the create QP, you can see we've got the input the symbol and the string put or call. And then the output from this method is a quotes provider. So it's got a variable quotes provider QP, and we go through, we create the quotes provider. We, we're only interested in two fields, the trade volume and strike price. Real time, again, we set whether it's exchange local, we load it, and we then have two separate update events. So if it's uh, if put or call is call, then we have this uh, QP dot updated is QP underscore call underscore updated. If it's uh, if it's not equals call. We then have another update event QP underscore put underscore updated, and then we return the QP. We return the, the quotes provided because that is required by this method because we have an output which is quotes provided. Now you might be thinking, well, how, how do I know what the syntax would be, for example, for the quotes provider? So one way you can do that is if you go to the toolbox and double click on the quotes provider, make the required changes here uh, in terms of real time, time zone, load, etc., etc., symbol, uh, and then you can go into the designer generated code and you can see some demonstration code for creating the, cro the quotes provider. And uh, in addition, you can see what the uh, namespaces could be. You can get a clue for what the namespaces would be looking at the variables that this creates. But uh, we don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the program and I'm just going to delete this. Just to recap a little bit, we, uh, we've we created the option chain provider. We've then gone through the option chain provider, creating quotes providers. And then for each quotes provider, we are setting up separate events for the put and for the call. Each of those update events does basically the same. And I probably could have made this a little more, a little tidier, but uh, just to perhaps make it a little more clear what's going on. So we've got a, a, a an update for a specific quotes provider. And what we do is we get two bits of information. One is the trade fall and one is the strike price. And we can get that using this syntax. So we know it's coming from the sender, it's quotes provider. Then we've got dot quote and then square brackets in quotes, trade volume and uh, close quote. Um, quotes close square bracket dot integer value because this is volume it's an integer and uh, strike price as a double value similar syntax and then what we do for each time this happens is we use a in this case a dictionary called call price volume and we say if it's already got and we, we're going to store the uh, strike price converted to a string as the key in this this dictionary. If the dictionary has a key with the current strike price in it, then is the trade volume um, less than the call, or rather is the, uh, the value stored in that, the volume stored in that, less than the call trade volume, in other words, the the value we've just stored here. If it is, then we replace it with the current call trade volume. And in this way, we're trying to keep a record of which the greatest call trade volume was throughout the duration of the bar. If there is not a key with the current strike price in it as a string, then what we do, we create a value and we store the call trade volume against that. Having done that for each time the update occurs, we now sort 
the dictionary. Now, sorting a dictionary is pretty meaningless. What we actually do uh, is call this method, which I've written. And what the method does is it goes through the values of the volume, sorts those, and then sorts the, uh, the keys to the equivalent. So in other words, we end up with a key with the uh, the highest volume, the key with the next highest volume, etc., or at least with the uh, with equal volumes. And uh, then I've just got some information here to help me debugging the program. Now let's just have a quick look at this dictionary sort. And I'm not going to say a lot about this because basically I've cheated and I've used a method that I created back in program 111. So if you want to know how this works, it's quite a straightforward uh, little method to sort a dictionary in the way I've just mentioned, then you can go to program 111. And uh, I've talked about that in a little more detail there. So there, that's the, uh, the basic functionality. And having done that, we now I can plot the keys based on um, C keys 0, 1, 2 and 0, P keys, P keys 1, 0, 1, 2 for the, the put keys. And if we uh, just, just to go back, having done the, uh, the sort, you'll see that we're using P keys and C keys because we're using that as the output from the vector that this uh, this method actually outputs a vector and we're, we're storing that into P keys. And then the very final thing right at the very bottom of the program is we clear the dictionary, the call price full dictionary and put price full dictionaries uh, each time we get to the end of the bar. So let's go back to the chart where you can see we're developing some plots and this is for a 20 second bar. And if you wish to change the colors or the sizes, you can go to format analysis techniques and format. And you can also change the debug time if you wanna use that, or you could just comment out those debug print statements, but the style and the color can both be changed here. And uh, finally, what I want to do is just show you for, I think it was probably uh, for not necessarily the chart I'm looking at now, but we just want to look at the, uh, the debug statements. So for this particular bar, which was 1039, we had um, the, the keys uh, for the C keys, 129, 124 and 125. So that would be the, 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 the strike price with the highest volume, the next highest and the next highest for this specific bar at 1039. And if we just look at the, the raw data for that bar, you'll see here, it's actually quite simple to, to look at, but uh, we had only actually uh, four values in the dictionary and the one with the highest value highest volume was 129, the next highest was 124, and the next highest with a volume of 2 was 125. And you'll see that those coordinate with the values that I've got here. And that's what would have been plotted on the chart at the time. So uh, I hope that might be useful to you. If you have any questions or if you spot any errors, then please let me know and uh, we'll make this program available for you to download if you'd like to experiment with it, change it, modify it, add other things to it. And also please, if you're not already, subscribe to this channel. And also if you like to hear and watch more videos like this one, then go to markplex.com, markplex.com, and you can sign up for the email newsletter there. So thank you very much.